Hi there, it's our last topic. Chapter 20, which is inferences on regression. Remember, inferences are, these are hypothesis tests. There we go. Hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. All right, so with, with inference, you know, we, we take a sample and then it tells us something about the population. So here's my population. And here, I'm going to have a little sample out here. And my sample is who I have data for. And now my data is going to include two columns of information. It's going to be two quantitative variables. And so I look at my data, and then what I wanted to use it to do is to say, well, what does the population look like? So that's what the sample, this is kind of the idea of inference. All right, so last time we talked about uh, regression. Uh, we got two columns of information, and I have some data that I just put together. Uh, it's the top 200 budget movies, basically the most expensive movies that were made. All right, so the most expensive budget of any movie up to this point was Avengers Endgame, and it had a budget of $400 million. And, um, and then when it earned in gross, gross earnings, you can see over here, it made, this is in millions, this is 2,800 million, which means it made $2.8 billion. That's a lot of money, all right? So, um, and so we basically, I, I graphed, I, I ran linear regression on this, and I come up with this scatter plot, but I will, I will do it in, all right, so here's stat crunch, here's my data, like I said. I'm um, gonna do stat, regression, simple linear. And the question that I'm gonna ask about this data, all right, is do movies that have higher budgets make more money on worldwide growth? So I actually have three columns here, but we're gonna, like the mess that gross means in the USA, worldwide growth, obviously worldwide. And um, so we want to know if spending more money means making more, making more money, all right? So when we're picking our X variable and our Y variable, we want to pick our variable so that the Y variable depends on the X variable. So here we think the worldwide growth may depend on the budget. Now, it sh definitely should go this way since the budget comes before the worldwide growth. So you, you, you know, so whatever's coming first, that should be the X, that's the explanatory variable. So here is the budget. And then once we spend our budget, then Y, the thing that comes last, this is our worldwide gross, all right? I'm gonna hit compute and we're gonna take a look at this scatter plot. All right, so you can see um, my scatter plot, pretty scattered, it's pretty spread out. It's already got this red line here, which is the, our best fit line. So it looks like it could be linear, but we have to think, let me get back on here. Um, where is my word, there we go. You know, I have to think, um, could, well, first of all, this is the sample. The scatter plot, just like histograms, they describe the sample. And what I really want to know about is the population. So this is, so the population here would be like all possible high budget films. So like the, the, the lowest budget on any of these films is $150 million. So all of these are expensive movies. So for expensive movies, as my budget increase, Increases, does the worldwide gross increase? And obviously the red line does, but it, that, that is a calculation from the data. Could the underlying relationship here actually be flat? Could this be the one? And so it's possible. I mean, I'm looking at this. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a few up here, a handful that are like, that are high. But a lot of them seem to be in this range. So it's possible that the slope, the underlying slope, that for all movies, if I was to you know, put all future movies and all potential movies on this graph, 
that the, but the slope really isn't increasing. So the slope may be zero, and that is what we're going to test today. Oh, why, why? Okay, so we're going to test if the slope really is positive. Do we have, is this, is this data proved to us that it's positive or is it possibly zero? All right, so if we describe the association here, I'm going to say, you know, it looks like it could be linear. So when we describe a, a, a linear relationship or when we describe an association, we talk about its form, its direction, and its strength. And the form, we're going to say this is linear. It's not curved. It doesn't look like it's like coming straight and then going up. So I think it's linear enough. The direction, it appears like, you know, it's positive. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I do have, sometimes in order to see if there's an association, I look in the corners and say, where are there no points? And I look over here in this little triangle over here. So there's no points over here and there's no points down here. All right, so it seems like the data is going in, is staying in this range here. So I'm going to say the direction does look like it's positive, just because there's no small big numbers and no, or small x big y or big x small y. So it looks positive. And the strength, it's pretty, the, you know, the points are pretty spread out. So I'm going to say this is a moderate strength. Now we would probably want to look at R. So kind of tell us really is it is this modern or not? And R tells us it's a measure of how linear data is. And I look over here and here's R. So R is 0.48, all right? So it's close to 0.5. So that kind of indicates that I have a moderate strength positive, because the sign is positive, linear association. All right, so so my R kind of agrees with my assessment of the graph. All right, and to interpret the slope, so where do we get the slope? Now, if you look here, part of the output, and in addition to the graph, I brought over some of the output. Um, and you can find that. If I go click back here, this is all the stuff at the top up here. I brought all that down here. So this right here, that see that equal sign, that's the equation. All right, so my equation here is y hat. All right, so this worldwide gross, that's the y. And really, uh, even though StatCrunch doesn't put on there, we really should have a hat over this whole thing. The hat tells me that it's the line. Oh, you can see I even have a little arrow here. That this, this, equa this equation is the equation of that red line. And so the, this is the predicted y. All right, so the height of the line is the predicted, or on average, how much a movie makes. It's not actually how much a movie makes. It's on average how much a movie makes. So that's my hat. And then I have my intercept, which is minus 263.22, which we don't care about. And then my slope is 4.99 and budget. And budget in millions is my x-axis. All right. So to interpret the slope, my slope here, by the way, is this 4.99. Anything, the slope is the coefficient of x. It's what's being multiplied by x. So, um, so this guy's the slope. And that's because of this guy. And then this guy, this is the intercept. All right, so what's the slope? What do we say about the slope? Well, we said, okay, if I increase x by 1, then y goes up by the slope. All right, so if I'm increasing x by 1, that means I'm increasing my budget by a million dollars. So for every additional million dollars in budget, all right, so if we, so for these movies, for these, with this set of movies, uh, for every additional million dollars in budget, the average worldwide gross, right? So this, see this line goes through the middle, kind of the average. The average or predicted worldwide gross, right? Uh, it went up. 
or goes up or whatever you how you want to say. Um, and then by the slope, and the slope is 4.99, and y goes up in its units, and its units also in millions of dollars. So I'm going to put a little dollar sign here, million dollars. So I spend a million, I get an I get five million in return. Sounds good. All right, so um, how did Avengers do? All right, so Avengers, I actually have it up here. So Avengers, like I said, their budget was a million dollars, or that was 200 million. All right, and what's their rule by gross? Their rule by gross is 2797.8. And that's a million as well. All right. So if we wanted to say, well, for a, a movie that has a budget of 200 million, what's the predicted, you know, so what's Y hat on my budget, which is X, is 200 million? Well, Y hat is this guy. So for Y hat, this is minus 263.22 plus 4.99 times x, which now we're saying is 200. Did I say 200? It's 400, my bad. Let's see. Uh, a little eraser. Let's see, erase that two, this two, this two. That's my pen. Put the right number in there. All right, 400 million. 400 million. 400 million. Sorry about that. Okay, so for a movie whose budget is 400 million, then this is going to be on average what we expect and that is equal to 1,734.2 million. So almost 2 billion. Again, that's a lot of money, right? So that's kind of like here's, here, here is, um, that is Avengers Endgame, right? So this, the height of this guy is the actual, that's the two billion seven is up here. Well, where it crosses the line, so if I go straight down, right, or across the line, this height is what I would expect to make based on this model, based on this, this line. And then this, this different, this distance, this is called the residual or the error, all right, that's E. All right. So, so the height, the actual height for Avengers Endgame is 2797.8 million. The predicted height is 1,734.2 million, all right? So that means that our residual, all right, so E equals the observed value minus the predicted value. This is this is the actual y minus y hat, right? So the y that's the worldwide gross here. That's twenty seven ninety seven point eight, and uh, my predicted is seventeen thirty four point two, and that ends up being one zero six three point six, and this is in millions of dollars. So, how'd they do? All right, so basically worldwide, end game, earned, that's about a billion dollars. It's a billion, 64 million, all right, about a billion dollars more, so that's how much they earned. They earned 
almost three billion. But this is a, a billion dollars more than a movie would expect to make. based on this model, this linear regression model. All right. Okay, so let's do our test. All right, let's go back. Our question, our research question is, do movies with higher budgets make more money? All right, so we were kind of talking about this before. If as X increases, Y increases, and that would say that answer is yes, all right? So if the, the slope is positive, it would say more budget, more gross. If the slope is zero, it would mean I'm adding budget, but on average, the worldwide gross is staying the same. And obviously it could go down, which you know that, that would really be bad for movie makers if they spent more money and then got a worse, or actually that'd be better, you could spend less money, you know. Okay. So basically what we're gonna test in, in answering this particular research question, we're gonna test um, if the slope is zero or not, all right? So our, our hypotheses, and again, my research question was, you know, um, the spending, spending more money Uh, result in higher worldwide gross. All right, so our hypotheses. All right, so we got our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. Okay, the null is always about equality, right? And, and it's about the slope. So it's going to be that the slope equals something. And when I'm talking about the slope, I'm talking about the population slope. All right, there's the slope of the line. This, uh, this was, you know, this, this line was fit to these points. And there, there may be some underlying relationship between budget and worldwide growth, and this line is an estimate of that relationship. So there's some underlying true line, all right? And it has some slope. And that slope of the population is, is, uh, has a symbol beta. So the population slope, which is beta one, actually beta one, we're gonna say this is equal to zero. And when the slope is zero, that means there's not a linear relationship between the two variables. The slope of zero means it's flat. If the slope of zero as x increases, you know, you know, increase x, y doesn't change. All right? So our null is that there is no relationship between the two variables. Another thing we can say, sometimes this is a, de a dependence, independence um, test. And we talked about that with our chi-square test of independence. And so here, if x doesn't affect y, if y is not affected by x, then y is independent of x. So that's another thing we could say. We can use this, this is a test of independence. So this is y is independent independent of x. So worldwide gross is independent of, of your budget, all right? So, um, and that really wouldn't make any sense, or, you know, there wouldn't be expensive movies, but, <laughs> you know, uh, so we kind of know the answer, but we want to see if the data backs it up. So maybe, and maybe, we're, you know, people are living in a delusion. It happens. All right, so then the alternate is the opposite of this. And so here is the slope is not zero. All right, so it's not equal to zero. Now we could, because we were trying to say more money, 
higher gross, we could instead say, okay, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this greater than zero. Okay, because greater than zero means more money, more gross. Not equal to zero means I spend more money and the worldwide gross changes. So that's a two-sided test. So if Y goes down, it would prove my hypothesis. And so I think we want to use this as a one-sided, all right? Okay, uh, base run zero. Uh, and this means if it's if there is a slope, so if the, if the thing is positive, then it means there is a linear relationship. All right, so if, if our p-value is small, it's going to prove we have got a linear relationship. So um, this means there's a linear relationship, and the relationship is between the x and y variables. The same with this one, same linear relationship. This is between uh, budget and gross. Budget and gross. All right, so now increase x, increase y. That's what happens when beta, the underlying slope is greater than zero. All right, and then here we would say y is not independent of x, or y is dependent on the x. All right, so y is not independent. So here we would say y, which was the worldwide gross, does depend. on X, which is the budget. So yeah, this one makes more sense, right? So probably, and again, remember, if the p-value is small, it proves the alternate, all right? If the p-value is big, then either one of these, it, it proves nothing. And either of these could be true. All right, let's talk about the conditions, and I'm just gonna read these, there's a lot of them. Um, the randomization independence condition. All right, so this is this is every data set needs to pass this. So basically, my my observations here are the movies. So are the gross earnings and the uh, budget? I guess I should put in here and the budget. Um, are they independent from other movies? So if I if I knew what the gross earnings on one movie is and I knew the budget on the movie, does that mean uh, there's some other movie that should have a similar budget? And so there are some movies in this list where there probably are in some dependence because we got, you know, in game Avengers, there's a bunch of Avengers movies, so maybe they're not independent, but I think they're okay. You know, they do spend different money amounts on you know, Avengers 1, 2, 3, and 4, or whatever, however you want to look at those movies. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to go with, yeah, they're okay. All right. Um, linearity. All right, so the, this, is, this is part of linear regression. So if we don't, we have to have a linear form. And we said, early, up above, we said the form was linear. So when we looked at the scatter plot, it looked linear to us. All right. The last two are different conditions than what we're used to, all right? One of them is called the equal variance condition, all right? And so basically, or it's equal variance of the residuals. Um, so the residuals, again, that is, we can go back up here, to our graph, it's all these distances, so there's the height of that, that line there, and this one, you know, and then these are negative, so some are negative, some are, are positive, and what we want to know is, is the, is the spread of how far away these points are from the line, is that, are those, is the spread the same whether I'm at the left side on the on the on the 150 budget or the 400 budget, all right. And so, so basically, what you do to to check that is you look at a predicted versus residuals graph, all right. So here's the residuals and here's the predicted values, all right. So basically, I drew a line here through zero, all right. So this is zero residuals. Anything that has zero residuals is right on the line. All right, and so then I have all my positive residuals on all my negative residuals. So is the spread on the left side and the spread on the right side 
about the same as you go down. So if I look around here, you know, how's that spread and how's this spread? You know, so are they about the same? And I'm going to say yes. Now we have these guys. So we have a couple outliers. So which makes me think, well, maybe this isn't such a good graph, okay? Because of these outliers, but it's probably okay. But basically, if I look at how wide the possible values are from the top to the bottom, they're about the same. So I'm going to say, yeah, they're okay. Um, the other condition is that the, the, the residuals are supposed to look normal. So I could look at a histogram. What I did here is I there's a there's a plot. It's called a QQ plot, and that's what this is. And so basically, I look at the plot, and I have this this red line is like you know is is like y equals x or something. You know, it's it's just a straight line. And if the if the data, if any data, you can find, in fact, you can apply this plot to any set of data and say does the do does this data set look like the population might be normal? And so you can do look at this. And so basically, if the points, and you usually look in the middle, there's always going to be weird stuff that happens at the end. I'm like, these are okay. You know, just just ignore this stuff. But the stuff in the middle is at a straight line, and it does kind of fit on the line. It does look like it curves maybe a little bit. If these points are pretty close to that line, all the way through the middle. So so we're going to say yes, that looks that looks normal. So we're going to that is definitely. In fact, if it, if I was consulting and I saw that I'd say that was fantastic. That's great. All right. So now I'm I'm going to talk about the test statistic and the p-value. And so when you go back here and I, I basically now I'm going to I copied some more of this output. So earlier I was looking all the way up to R and now I'm going to skip R squared. There's some stuff about in the book. You can read about R squared if you want, but I'm not going to cover it. Um and so um so I copied this down, and here's a, there's a t-stat and a p-value. All right, so I've got two test statistics and two p-values. They both are those are both tests. One, the top one tests if the intercept is zero or not, which I couldn't care less about. All right, I never care about that. The second one, the slope, that's the one that matters. That's what we've been talking about. Our our hypotheses have been about the slope. So so this is the test. This row is one test, and the other row is the other test. All right. So we're ignoring the intercepts. We're only caring about the slope. And here you can see it lists the slope is five. We looked at that above, and when we were looking at the equation, that was 4.99. So the slope. Um, and by the way, the symbol for the slope from uh, from the data from the data set is little b1. So little b1 is 4.994. All right, this is this is the slope that this is like the average slope for our data set. And our test is about beta one. This is the underlying slope, which we don't know what it is. So you both tell me the relationship between the two variables. All right. And I didn't mean to copy this, so let me pause for a moment. All right. So, so this t stat, this is a, this is another t test, right? So linear regressions are t tests. And so that t, this is this t equals seven point six four. 08 if you remember 7.6408 if you want. This is our test statistic and it has 195. Actually the degrees of freedom are n minus 2. Now I said the top 200 and I know that that's 200 minus okay but there's actually I had to pull out three of them because they they were more recent and so they didn't have their gross they didn't have their uh, gross their worldwide gross and uh they had a budget, but no worldwide growth. So I pulled out three of them. So N is actually 197. So I had 197 movies. And where I know we've been looking at N minus one degrees of freedom, this is N minus two degrees of freedom. 
And why is it two? Well, we're estimating two things. We're doing an intercept and a slope simultaneously. And so we're in the past with the n minus one, we were estimating a one mean. And it kind of like the more things I'm estimating, the fewer degrees of freedom I have. So, I mean, that's kind of how it works. So, but we lose two degrees of freedom because I'm estimating a slope and an intercept. So then 197 minus two is 195 degrees of freedom, all right? So that's my T, that's my test statistic. Um, and then my p-value, it says is less than 0 0.0001, which means this is equal to, up to four decimal places, it's 0 0.0000, all right? So it's not exactly zero, but it's just a very small number where my four decimal places are zero. So that's a very small p-value, all right? Now I'll put a little FYI here. So one of the things that I stood out, and this is one of the questions asked about it, the homework questions, um, we're not gonna get into it, but this, it says estimate of error standard deviation, all right? And the symbol for this is S sub E, all right? So, and this is 384.8, all right? And this is in Y unit, so this is in millions of dollars. All right, so our estimate of the, this is our estimate, all right, so of the standard deviation of the points, all right, um, let's go back Look at our graph again. Oh, there it is. All right, so all of these points are pretty, are spread out, all right, so if we looked at, you know, how far the points are from the line, all right, so they are spread out. So remember, standard deviation is a measure of spread. So we're not just looking at how spread out they are in general. You know, we're not saying, okay, what is our spread? But, but our spread is, instead of, remember in, when we did this, we calculated the standard deviation, it was squared distances to the mean. Well, this standard deviation is about squared distances to the line, all right? So it's those residual squared, all right? So basically, how spread out are the residuals? So that's what this SE is. And it kind of tells us, um, you know, the, this, this, my B here, my B1 tells me, here's what I think the slope is. And that line on the graph says, okay, this is what I think the relationship looks like, all right? But that's what's happening on average. But for actual movies, the movies don't fit that line. And so, and uh, you know, like with R, our R is 0.5, so that means it's a moderate distribution, it's pretty spread out. So I'm gonna have, so the standard deviation says, well, how far away do I expect actual movies to be from the line, all right? So, you know, it's somewhat, because our residuals are normal, we said they're normal, so we expect about 90, we expect 95% of the movies to be within two of these standard errors from the line. So that's about 400 million. So we expect, we expect 95% of the movies to be within 800 million of the line. By the way, our, uh, our, uh, the Avengers was outside of that, okay? Because it was, it was a billion, over a billion away. So 95% of movies I expect to be within 800 million, but obviously this guy was not within uh, 800 million. He was within a billion. And so, but anyway, so that's what that's about. All right, so what's the conclusion? All right, so is my p-value is less than 0.05, because zero is less than anything. So my p-value is less than 0.05, and that means I have three yeses. All right, one, yes, reject the null. All right, and let's, let's, let's remind ourselves what the null, okay, the null was that the slope, the underlying slope is zero. The alternate is that we said this was greater than zero. Actually, and, and this is a good point. When I ran this, I did not change, see where it says does not equal zero? I, did, I forgot to change that to does not equal. And so when, when I'm doing a one-sided 
I just divide the p-value in half. So, so whenever I do a greater than or a less than, my p-value, my actual p-value is going to be half of what StatCrunch tells me the p-value is for a one-sided when it's greater than. If it was not equal to, you just use what StatCrunch says. But it was zero, so half of zero is zero, so the p-value is you know, half of zero is zero, so it doesn't matter here. All right, so we're going to reject the null, and that is not a not equal to. That was an underline. So. Okay. All right, so reject the null, and yes, it's significant. So this is significant. So my slope is significantly different from zero. And then three, all right, my data, all right, these movies. provides enough evidence. In fact, it provides, because it's my p-value is zero, it's very strong evidence. All right, that, you know, larger budgets, larger budget movies. Make more money. Now, I'm very careful not to write if you spend more money, then you're going to make more money. Okay? Because here's the deal what kind of study is this? Is this, is this observational or is it um, an experiment? Right? The, are movies an experiment? No, they're not. I, you know, they just, this is what these people decided to budget. I just observed, I, in fact, I went to a data set, I, I found the data set online and copied and pasted it. That's where I got the data. Um, so that's just, so it's observed. So that means I cannot say that the extra money that's being spent is actually why they make more money. And we'll talk about that later. All right, so another thing you can do is a confidence interval. So we did a test and we can do a confidence interval. So if I go back here and hit options edit and it says hypothesis test. By the way, here's the test slope of zero. I could have done this, made this a greater than, which is what I could have done. Or I can click confidence intervals. All right, so I hit compute. And there's my confidence interval. And again, I don't care about the intercept. All I care about is this guy. So I have, um, this is also a T interval, right? But, um, so here's, I just copy and pasted that in here. All right, so here is, you know, for the slope, here's my confidence interval. All right, so what's the interpretation of the slope? This is a 95% confidence thing. So this is with 95% confidence. All right, so this is going to be the same thing we said earlier for the slope, except now instead of saying, you know, it goes up by this, this, this number, I'm going to say it goes up between some two numbers. All right, so 95% confidence for every additional unit of X, so every additional, and X is a million dollars of budget. Um, the worldwide gross for a movie. So now we're talking about not just this data set. We're talking about for all movies that could have occurred that have these kind of uh, large budgets. The worldwide gross, um, we could say will be or um, the predicted worldwide gross, okay, will be between, and this is 3.7 million. I like to say, where will I grow is not will be between. Get my eraser. Well, uh, the growth will be, okay, maybe I will. All right, I'm gonna go back and rewrite that. <laughs> will be between 3.7 and 6.3 million dollars more. So it's going to increase. The worldwide gross will increase 
by between 3.7 and 6.3 million dollars. All right, so increase the budget by a million, and this is the average. I should have said this. The predicted or average worldwide gross. Not that it, the actual value of the movie will go up this much. This is this is for the line. This is a this is a confidence interval for the slope of the line. It is not a confidence interval for the amount a single movie makes. The movies don't fit on the line. In fact, they can be regularly 400 billion, 200 billion above, you know, 200 billion below that. So this is just for the line itself. So the average gross. All right, now here's what I was saying before. This is not an experiment. This is an observational study. Right. Don't put on the test if this is an observation. It's not an observation. It's an observational study. Right. Um, again, I just got this data off the internet. I did not do an experiment. I didn't say, okay, hey, let's do an experiment. Let's spend this much money on a movie and see what it does. And then let's spend this other, you know, so that's not what I did. I just said, here's what people spent. Here's what they made. So therefore, observational studies cannot prove causation. All right, so the fact that they're spending more money is not necessarily why the the movies make more money. Now you might think, well, if it's sure it does, but not necessarily. All right, so what are some you know possible working variables? I can think of a couple. So I'm thinking one. I'm thinking like when you spend when 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 people are are actually budgeting large amounts of money, all right, that they already expect that movie to be profitable, to be very profitable. Yeah, when they decided to make, you know, Endgame, for that particular movie, the previous movie made a huge amount of money, so they were expecting this one to make a lot of money, so they spent a lot on it, knowing or hoping that it was going to make them a lot of money. Obviously, it uh, paid off in gangbusters. So, um, so that's one thing. It could be, you know, certain directors tend to make a lot of money. So maybe the directors, you know, so certain directors that have made money in the past, you know, they're going to say, hey, Cameron Crowe, he's done great. Spielberg, all these type, you know, these types of directors are going to get big budgets because their movies tend to make a lot of money. Um, another thing is the actors. Right? So certain actors draw in more people. So you gotta and you gotta pay those actors more. So the budget's more and the earnings are more. So there's all these other things that could be why um, the budget and the earnings are both high. And they go together, right? Correlation does not prove causation. All right, I'm done. All right. Uh, so this is my last video lecture. I know you're sad. Um, I'm sad I didn't get to spend more time with you guys in person. But uh, um, be safe. Good luck on the final. There'll be more. I might make another one. Who knows? Um, and uh, I'll be seeing you guys exam day.